Hi there, our topic is interpreting out-of-bounds planets and also near out-of-bounds planets. So here's an image for you for interpreting out-of-bounds planets. Imagine that at 23 degrees 27 minutes of declination there's a glass wall. And this wall is completely transparent. Now, uh, let me stop right there and show you a diagram. I've got up here in the Sirius 2.0 software the birth chart of astrologer Stephen Forrest. And I'm going to click on uh, listing and the declination and latitude graphic display. And I'm just going to enlarge this a little bit. And this is a diagram that shows uh, how far the planets are from the celestial equator. This distance from the celestial equator tells me down here that the red line is the celestial equator. This is the declination. So this is a nice diagram to visually see. Uh, is that, I guess that's redundant, visually see, right? To, to see how far the planets are from the ecliptic plane. And when, when they move beyond this path that looks like a sine wave, this is the path of the sun, the ecliptic plane, if they move outside it, and we see that Uranus is just a little bit outside it, that's out of bounds. So what I'm saying is that imagine there's a glass wall, if you follow my cursor, horizontal glass wall going right through the peak of this, and anything up here in this range is out of bounds, and there's a little, uh, I don't know, about little, there's a glass wall going right there, and another glass wall right here. Okay, so we can imagine that planets that move beyond that glass wall are out of bounds. They're outside the normal range, the, the normal uh, distances that, that objects usually maintain uh, from, from the celestial equator. Okay, so this is a nice visualization. And we see that uh, when Stephen Forrest was born, several planets are almost out of bounds. Mars and Mercury are fairly close. Sun and Jupiter uh, look extremely close. Venus not far. So all these planets close. Uh, and over here it lists what the declinations are. So we can see that Mercury and Venus, uh, you know, are 22 south of 06. Uh, and 22 south 21, um, 23 27 is the out of bounds point, so they're about a degree, so, and slightly over a degree. Uh, Jupiter, less than a degree. Uh, sun, slightly less than a degree away from being out of bounds. So a lot of planets very close, one just barely out of bounds, and Pluto, it tells us, is 23 27. It's right on the fence. It's right on that. <laughs> That glass fence, it's right on it. It comes out blue here. It must be just an uh, extremely tiny amount just short of being out of bounds. It's right, right at 2327. Um, so this is a nice visual, uh, you know, to see these things. Okay. Um, back to my PowerPoint presentation. Um, sorry about that. Here we go. Um, okay. So there's a wall. Uh, at 2327, and outside the wall, just to uh, trigger your imagination a little bit about this, imagine that outside the wall there are people camping out. They're living alone, or they're in communes, or ashrams. Uh, sometimes they look pretty much like anybody else, but they don't quite fit into the normal patterns of life. That's out of bounds. The people just don't fit in. Um, and, you know, some people may not fit in, you know, because they have, you know, maybe a disability or an unusual trait. But these are people who don't fit in, not, not for some reason like that, or not because they're ostracized, or there's some bias against them for, because of their religion or something like that. These are people who are outside the, the mainstream because they think differently, they feel differently, they function differently. They, they just don't feel a part of the way things normally work. That's what out of bounds is. 
and they and they're not necessarily anti-social or completely eccentric. They may have their own, um, you know, co communities and so on. They sort of camp out outside the mainstream uh, of society. And this camping out is more psychologically, mentally, and emotionally, not always physically, although more, I believe that um, they, they are physically removed from the mainstream uh, more often than, than most people are as well. Uh, but psychologically, uh, should be pretty consistent. Now, here's an idea, and uh, one of the reasons I'm using Stephen Forrest's chart is I got this idea from watching uh, a video of him where he talks about this. A planet's being almost out of bounds. So if a planet is uh, about 21 or 22 degrees to that 23, 27 minutes, and, and he's an example of it, he has many near out of bounds planets, Here's how I interpret that. They, they're they near, let's go back to the chart, the, all these planets, and he's got a zillion of them, right? He's got Sun, Mercury, I mean, every inner planet except the Moon is close to being out of bounds. And notice where the Moon is, and I'll talk about this in a minute. The Moon, by contrast, is almost on the celestial equator. So all of his inner planets, Sun through Mars, are the, those five, Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, are either near out of bounds, within a degree or two degrees of being out of bounds, or almost right, the one exception to the moon, it has almost zero declination. It's, it's rather dramatic, and it has a dramatic effect. The dramatic effect is this. The near out of bounds planets are effective in bringing outside ideas into the mainstream. These people tend to be accepted uh, by the mainstream, uh, you know, a little bit weird. They're out there on the edges, but they're not totally weird because they're not out of bounds. So they're often seen as innovators. They're not seen as being uh, threatening or being um, out of touch. They're often seen as being uh, interesting people, exciting people. A little bit weird, <laughs> you know, a little, a little bit, uh, you know, they're oddballs. They're out there. But they're okay. They're okay oddballs. Um, they like these oddballs that, that are uh, out near the fringe um, because they see through the glass wall and they see what's going on out there uh, and they, are, they bring those weird ideas into the mainstream. So they don't sit in the middle of the road, um, but they can bring in those, those ideas that the real weirdos come up with and they bring them in. So you just imagine that glass wall right there and all these planets hanging out, seeing right through the glass wall and bringing that in. You know, it's like a filter. Here's all this weird stuff out here and they're filtering it and bringing it in to the mainstream and seeing out, uh, maybe also helping these people out here uh, they understand how they can relate to the mainstream. So they're connectors. And being on this side, not out of bounds, they're able to bring that information they want to work within the system. Um, so that's uh, what the near out of bounds planets do. They see and hear right through that glass wall, but they're inside the wall within the mainstream. Now, so they are innovators. Uh, now, if you're out of bounds, but not way out of bounds, up to about 25 degrees, roughly, within about a degree and a half or so of being out of bounds, you're close to the glass wall. So you can see what most people are doing. Uh, you prefer not to be in the mainstream or doing the normal life. Um, but you know how it works. So you're, you're outside the normal way of doing things, but you're not out of touch. Okay, so um, that's what happens at a, up to there. Now, once you get out about, about above about 27 degrees, I've come up with these numbers by looking at charts. The people have a declination beyond about 27 degrees, and I'm not sure exactly where the dividing point is, and I don't think there's, there's, there's some rigid change. It, it, it's very much like a visual. You get a, a certain distance away and you can't see anymore, right? I mean, think of it literally. 
if you were camping out or you know in a commune or an ashram or living out in solitude away from everybody else at a certain point you can't even see them you can't hear them you, you, you're you, you're outside the range of hearing uh, and seeing and that seems to be somewhere uh, once you get out there 28 29 degrees um, you're so far from the mainstream that you don't even relate to it very well you don't even care about it uh, you may still understand it because you have other planets that are not out of bounds nobody has all their planets out of bounds so nobody's completely out outside of uh, connecting if they are that that has nothing to do with declination um, but that particular planet uh, is free it, it, it's just free to explore um, so what happens um, when you're free to explore uh, you may get genius you you may um, you, any number of things can happen but to summarize uh, from about 22 degrees to out of bounds uh, and also to add a few more points to this, not just to summarize. Um, the person can, can see the people camping outside the mainstream. I already said that, right? So if you're, like Stephen, has many planets almost out of bounds, near out of bounds. Uh, you, you can see the people camping outside the mainstream. You can hear them. You can see them. You can communicate with them. Uh, like the out of bounds people, the near out of bounds people don't feel comfortable in the middle of the road, but they aren't as foreign to the mainstream as the out-of-bounds people, right? The near out-of-bounds are not as foreign to the mainstream. And this is the additional point I really want to make. The near out-of-bounds people are more effective in working with others, and often they are more successful than the out-of-bounds people. That's really an important point. Um, this is just personal observation. Also, I, uh, Stephen talks about these ideas in, in a tutorial video lecture, a uh, little caption a few, few minutes long that I I saw and I um, you know, read what he said about it. Um, so he uh, he came up with this idea of near out of bounds. At least that's the first time I've seen it, and it really makes sense. Um, and he himself is a great example of it. Uh, and he gives examples of different people who have near out of bounds planets, and they can be very powerful. They can be very charismatic, for good or bad. That's the other point. Out of bounds is not necessarily good. I mean, if you're an astrologer. You're in a field that's out of bounds. Um, so, and, and you may think, wow, out of bounds is really cool. Well, it's, it's cool. Everything has its good and bad points. Um, so, uh, for good or bad, they, they can be sec successful. Um, you know, Hitler has some near out of bounds planets. So there's a person who's very successful, but not for something uh, that was good and constructive. Um, so the out-of-bounds people, uh, by contrast, the out-of-bounds, not the near out-of-bounds, the, tr the fully out-of-bounds people are successful only by creating an alternative system. They are not good at integrating what they have to offer. You have to join them. You have to go and join them. Typically, they completely leave mentally. They're leaving, sometimes even physically, but mentally, they leave the mainstream. They create their own way. They're not as good at integrating and being successful. So every astrological configuration has its strong points and weak points. You know, it, it has its its destiny, its path, its its purpose. Um, there's always a positive and negative potential to any anything. Um, but you can see more clearly if these ideas are true. These are just models and concepts I've I've come up with. They, they seem to work very very well. Uh, other people have confirmed and found independently similar ideas um, but we'll see we need to do more controlled research I think Stephen is doing some some more detailed research on this um, and I can't wait to see what additional information he has about it um, as well as many other people so uh, so both the near out of bounds and the fully out of bounds uh, planets don't necessarily have a better alternative but they think they do <laughs> right so you know, they, of course, we always think whatever we're into is right by, by definition. Uh, so I wanted to make that clear. And so I've already mentioned this. A lot of these ideas inspired by Stephen Forrest. Okay, as well as, you know, many other people, uh, Kate Borer and uh, other people as well. Now, here's my, I think this is my last slide, yes. Um, last point. 
it, it feels like the people with planets in Gemini and Sag get to have all the fun. <laughs> because if you have planets in Gemini and Sag, your planets might go out of bounds and you get to be weird. And same thing with Sag Cap. Sagittarius and Capricorn, even though we think of Capricorn as being uh, conservative, you can get out of bounds planets to, to send you outside the mainstream. So this seems to be the wild and fun areas, and if you have planets near Aries, this is Aries, Cancer, Libra, uh, Capricorn, and then back to Aries. So if you have planets around Pisces, Aries, or uh, Virgo, Libra, around this area, um, the planets are just not going to be out of bounds. I mean, the normal planets can't be. They're going to be near uh, the celestial equator. They're going to have small declination. So they're in the middle of the road. How boring is that? It seems a little unfair. Well, it's not so unfair because you can get an, a special effect when a planet is very close to zero declination. Um, and that's the interesting thing, thing about Stephen. I think one of the things that makes him so effective um, and, and successful and, and, and able to relate so well to people, that moon is within a degree. A declination is, is 0 south 54. Um, it's not extremely close, but it is within a degree, and I think it seems to be about a 2 degree area. Um, but his moon is close to being right on the celestial equator. So I believe that that has some power. So if you have planets in Pisces, Aries, or Virgo, Libra, Occasionally, they'll be very, very close, uh, within a degree uh, or two of the celestial equator, meaning that the declination is close to zero. And here's what I think it does. When a planet is between about one south and one north, probably a little bit bigger than that, but especially if they're within about a degree, it gives the ability to connect with universal truths that apply to everyone. Because you're on... You're you're on that universal note. You're you're at that inter that uh, that symmetry point. You're right on that symmetry point. So uh, you're neither north nor south, or you're very very close to it. So your ability to connect with universal truths that apply to everyone. Um, you're able to make things that would otherwise seem unusual feel very normal and common. Um, so. It's almost as if when you get close to this uh, zero declination, instead of getting bored and completely stuck in the middle of the road, a special power comes about and they seem to be aware. If they have any planets that are near out of bounds, they're able to bring that power right into the mainstream um, and make people understand it and appreciate it and, and it doesn't feel weird to them. I mean, what we think is weird and out of the norm changes historically, right? So something that was weird and crazy a hundred years ago in one particular country becomes perfectly normal a hundred years later or in maybe at the same time in a different country. They're able to make things feel universal and, and important and, and speak to the heart of things. So there is a universality at this point, at the point of zero declination, that cuts across boundaries. It is a point of power and the planet can work very effectively. Sometimes the planet can be manipula manipulative, can I speak correctly? Manipulative, and strategically twist things for the person's own benefit. So there's always a positive potential and a negative potential, at least I believe, with, with any astrological influence. So, so there are some ideas about declination, out of bounds, near out of bounds, near zero declination, um, you know, to think about these these ideas that I'm presenting, um, you know, have been developed since Kate Borer's work. Many people uh, using these ideas, um, and this is just another rendition of these ideas combined with with Stephen Forrest's insights and my own insights into it and uh, and ways of thinking about it. Okay, so that's some ideas on interpreting out of bounds planets and near out-of-bounds planets, as well as a few ideas about planets with declination that's very close to zero. Thank you for very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.